Hello and welcome. So today, guys, we are back again with the series where we are covering all aspects of fragrances or perfumes. During the last video, I shared with you a lot of information around perfume notes and I also discussed with you the importance of the olfactory journey. Today, I'm going to be covering with you how to make your perfume last whether it's on skin, whether it's on your clothes, just a couple of tips on how to make your perfume last. As part of this topic, I'm going to start today by speaking about perfume concentrations. What are the different types of perfume concentrations and what are the differences between one and the other? Then we're going to jump right in into the spray part of the video. And I'm going to start by speaking about how to prepare your skin to spray your fragrance. Of course, next we're going to jump into how to spray the fragrance. I'll be covering some very interesting tips as to how to spray your fragrance. I will also be sharing with you what not to do and what you must make sure to do when spraying your fragrance. Then, last but not least, I will be covering with you how to spray your fragrance when layering because there is a way that we need to spray our fragrance when we're layering it with other fragrances. But before we jump right in, if this is your first time here, I'm Arahi and I'm your fragrance concierge because I am totally committed to creating the best fragrance experience for you. I upload videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sundays, and sometimes you even get a bonus video for the week. If that sounds like a type of content that you're interested in and like a good plan, then please consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget, leave a comment. Let's go. All right, so let's go ahead and start by talking about what are perfume concentrations, right? So fragrances, for the most part, are comprised or the primary components of a fragrance besides the notes and the different chemicals that may be involved are really alcohol and the perfume oil itself. Now, when we talk about perfume concentration, it's really all about to what degree do we have perfume oils in the fragrance. The perfume or fragrance concentration really speaks to the strength of the fragrance and it is directly related to the percent of perfume oil that you can find in the fragrance versus the amount of alcohol. So when you have a perfume concentration that is higher, then that automatically means that there are more perfume oils in the fragrance and there is less alcohol. And of course, the fragrance will have more strength when you wear it, whether it's on your skin or your clothes. So the higher the concentration, the more pure is the fragrance. In addition to that, and very important, the higher the concentration of a perfume or the perfume oils in a fragrance, that also means that the fragrance will not only be a bit more intense, but it will also last much longer on your skin. So today, because we are talking about how to make your perfume last and how to spray your fragrance and how to prepare your skin and all of those different pieces, I figured that it was very important that we start by speaking about the different types of perfume concentration. So let's take a look at this quick diagram before we start. So let's start with the least of the strengths of the different types of perfume concentration. So I'm sure you've seen fragrances that say fresh, right? Instead of Eau de Parfum, they have Eau de Fresh. Well, Eau de Fresh refers to a perfume concentration level of anywhere between one to 3%, no more than that, which also explains that if you only have one to 3% of perfume oils in a fragrance, that would explain why typically an Eau de Fresh is a fragrance that doesn't last very long on your skin or otherwise. Now it is also important to know that in an Eau de Fresh type of uh, concentration, it's not so much about the alcohol balancing out the perfume oils. Typically an Eau de Fresh fragrance has quite a bit more just water than alcohol and then of course the 1-3% to of the perfume oils. The Eau de Cologne strength. 
So in the Eau de Cologne strength, you have anywhere between two to 5% perfume oils within the fragrance. This is still quite low. So you're only gonna get about two hours of lasting performance from your fragrance if it is an Eau de Cologne. So next, let's talk about the Eau de Toilette strength. So the Eau de Toilette strength is a little bit less intense than the Eau de Parfum, which we're going to cover next. And the Eau de Toilette seems to be a type that is typically used during the day. But you're only gonna get around three to four hours from an Eau de Toilette applied on skin and depending on your skin type and skin chemistry. The Eau de Toilette typically will have anywhere between five to 15% of the perfume oils. Obviously, because of this drop in the percent of perfume oil that you can find in the fragrance, an Eau de Toilette fragrance tends to be, of course, less expensive than an Eau de Parfum. Next, let's talk about the Eau de Parfum strength. Eau de Parfum has a perfume oil concentration level that can range between 15 and 20%. Eau de Parfums are really, really popular because they will only get you around four to five hours on skin truly, but they are less expensive than the Parfum and they do have decent performance. This also tends to be a concentration that is used more for evening and night occasions versus an Eau de Toilette, which is primarily used during the day. Next, let's talk about the Parfum Strength. So the Parfum Strength is the highest strength that you can go to, and it covers a perfume oil range between 20 to 40%. Because of this considerable increase in the concentration of perfume oils, parfums tend to be rather ex expensive. The good news is that even though the Eau de Parfum is rather expensive most of the time, you can get between six to eight hours of performance on skin. It is important for us to understand the different types of concentration that a fragrance or a perfume may have because that will allow us to set the correct expectation of how long or how should this fragrance perform on our skin. Now, does that mean that every fragrance that we pick up because it's a parfum, it's going to give us six to eight hours? No, because there are little lapses here and there when a fragrance is developed. But for the most part, when you pick up a parfum and due to its very high price point, you are going to be expecting the best of performances and you are going to get anywhere between six to eight hours plus from this fragrance. So now that we've covered the different types of perfume concentrations, now let's talk about how do you prepare your skin to spray a fragrance. So I will be giving you five different steps to follow in order to prepare your skin and give yourself the highest chance of getting the best performance from your fragrance or perfume. So let me start by saying that it is very important that when you are about to wear a fragrance or spray a fragrance on your body and clothes, it is very important that if possible, you shower or take a bath prior to doing so. So taking a shower or a bath before spraying your skin with a perfume uh, does help because of a couple of factors. Number one, following a bath or a shower, there will be warmth to your skin and there will be a certain degree of dampness to your skin, to call it something, immediately following a shower. But in addition to that, you just went through the cleanse process. So you have removed any dirt and any other particles that could get in the way of your fragrance. Let's start by speaking about exfoliate. So it is important that you exfoliate because the exfoliation process removes dead skin cells that will only be in the way of your fragrance really being absorbed by your skin in the most optimal way. And because you have those dry skin cells, you may be spraying your fragrance on, you know, dry skin and those may flake off and there goes your fragrance. So it is important that you exfoliate. To exfoliate, you can use anything from homemade exfoliating products comprised of salts and sugar and other things that you can find at home, or you can just pick up a rather inexpensive exfoliating type of bath salt 
salt or exfoliating type of product from places like Bath and Body Works, from Amazon, anywhere that you prefer. The second step in the process is cleanse. So after you exfoliate, it is key, it is critical that you cleanse. You want to cleanse by applying, of course, a soap of some sort and lathering it and removing it with water because that will allow you to ensure that all of the dead skin cells that you removed in the exfoliation process or that you lifted in the exfoliation process are now being removed and leaving your skin impeccable clean and ready. The next step is moisturize and moisturize just entails you applying either a body cream, a body lotion, a body oil, anything that will allow you to bring nourishment to your skin following that cleanse process or your shower or your bath. Now there's different schools of thoughts when it comes around you know moisturizing because some people really believe that you should try and use some sort of lotion or cream or body oil that has a scent that is dominant in the fragrance that you're about to use then there's other schools of thought that that feel that 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 just interferes with the fragrance itself so you should really use a non-scented type of product I have done both and I honestly prefer to have something that is in sync with the fragrance that I'm going to use. So for example, today I'm going to, when we talk about spraying, I'm going to be using as the little model fragrance, I'm going to be using Kiali's Vanilla Oudgasm from the Oudgasm collection. And when I apply that fragrance, I love to use my Nest uh, Madagascar Vanilla oil and those two seem to go rather well but that's not always the case with fragrances so you just have to make sure that if you're going to use a scented product to moisturize your skin and prepare the foundation to to spray a fragrance you want to make sure that you're picking products that have similar notes or where they both have the same dominant note the next step would be to use a perfume oil now, while I know that many people really don't do or follow this step, I tell you, it does make quite a difference. So after you apply your lotion, then what I recommend is that you apply, just dab a little bit of a perfume oil. It could be a perfume oil that has a note that is similar to the fragrance or if you're planning on layering, then you can use a perfume oil that has the scent that you would like to layer with your fragrance. Perfume oils really, really make a difference, guys, because perfume oils, it's almost like they seal in your fragrance once you spray it. The next step is to spray the perfume. And we are going to talk in detail about how to spray your fragrance. Everything from where to spray and how to spray. But let me just start by saying that the most important part when spraying your fragrance is that you make sure that you are spritzing and not spraying all over the place. So you want to spray your your perfume or fragrance on the specific points that I'm going to share with you and you want to intentionally spray. You don't just want to do like a mist. Now before we cover on where you're going to spray, it is very important that you understand that you are to spritz specifically in the area where you want to apply the perfume. You don't want to spray a fragrance at such a distance where it loses or misses the target of where you're trying to spray. So if I want to spray in this pulse point, I'm going to take my fragrance and I'm going to be very intentional about spraying right there. So the maximum distance that I would recommend would be here. And here we go. If I spray at that distance, you saw that there was a mist. And of course, the sprayer of a fragrance does make a difference. But for most fragrances, regardless of how the sprayer has been set up, it is important that you get as close as possible, not on your skin, but as close as possible as to be quite intentional. As you can see, now you can see that it is wet from the fragrance. Now, I also wanted to stop and talk a little bit about where to spray. I think that it is important that before we talk about where you're going to spray, let's talk about the fact that 
primarily we should be spraying on our skin not necessarily on our clothes not all fragrances are designed for you to spray them on your clothes fragrances are designed to be sprayed on your skin you can spray them on clothes i spray them on clothes i spray them on my hair i spray them everywhere that i feel like spraying them but truly the place to spray a fragrance or perfume is on your skin that is where you have the highest chance of the fragrance really performing to the point that you want it to now in addition to that you can spray your hair because of course you will be getting wafts of the fragrance throughout the day you can spray your clothes uh, as long as the fragrance doesn't stain your clothes because that will also assist in your getting wafts of the fragrance throughout the entire day but ultimately the prime the primary place to spray a fragrance is on your skin now when it comes to spraying a fragrance where do we spray so you want to touch on all of your pulse points so you are going to start by spraying on your wrists right here and then you are going to spray behind your ears because if you put your index finger behind your ear you will find your pulse point that is where you want to spray and of course we all know that we have a pulse point in the neck so you're going to go ahead and find that pulse point on your neck and wherever you can feel the beating of your heart you are going to spray there then there's also behind the knees you're going to find your pulse point there and spray there now there are different schools of thought that say that you should also uh, spray you know behind your elbows in, in the fold of your arm where your elbows are I spray there too sometimes but not all the time but if you like to just spray extra well you can definitely spray there now, something very important is to avoid crushing the notes Crushing the notes refers to when you spray a fragrance on your pulse point and then you automatically spray on the other pulse point and then you just like do this. Have you ever seen someone do that? Because people do do that. You are not supposed to do that because by making that motion or tapping them together, you are crushing the notes. And by crushing the notes, you could have an impact to the integrity of the fragrance and therefore the performance of the fragrance. All you need to do is spray the fragrance on your pulse point and then just let the fragrance dry. Even if it drips just a little bit down your arm, it doesn't matter. Just allow the fragrance to completely dry in your pulse point or wherever you apply it. Another thing that I did want to talk about is the misting in the air theory, right? So there are a couple of school of thoughts around the misting in the air. That's where you spray the fragrance into the air, a big mist all over, and then you walk through it. Personally, I don't believe in that because I just think it's a waste of a fragrance in, in all honesty. The fragrance is going to fall on your clothes. It's going to fall everywhere. It's going to fall on your furniture. It's going to fall on your wooden floors. It's going to fall everywhere. And to me, that's just a waste. But that's just my opinion. I am not an expert. I'm just sharing with you my experiences and what has worked for me. I do not believe in the misting and walking through. No. I believe that you need to be intentional about where you spray the fragrance. Make sure that it is sprayed. You don't have to spray multiple times all the time. We're going to talk about overspraying in a minute, but I do believe that if you are meaning to spray your clothes, which is fine as long as the fragrance won't stain your clothes, you can just spray your clothes. You can just take your fragrance and you can just go all around and spray and while you're at it spray your hair I mean just spray everywhere but that whole spraying to the air and walking through you're not going to get as much targeted uh, real estate if you know what I mean when you do that so just be intentional and spray where you want the fragrance to be now let's talk about overspraying I had a fam member uh, last week ask me what is overspraying? So spraying, let's talk about what is to spray, the regular spray, right? So for all constructive purposes, let's say that a regular spray, right? Because it depends on who you talk to, but a regular spray is really when you spray your fragrance on the pulse points that I just mentioned. 
right? You're spraying your wrist, you're spraying behind your ears, you're spraying in the pulse point of your neck, uh, you're spraying uh, behind your knees, you maybe even spray uh, in your decollete area. It really depends on where you want to spray. That is a regular spray. And typically when you do a regular spray, you only spritz once. You don't spray multiple times. Now, overspraying is when you, number one, spray more than one or twice at the most in each pulse point. Number two, overspraying refers to when you spray everywhere. Like when you take your fragrance and you're just going to spray everywhere, right? You're going all the way down your legs, you're going up your thighs, you're going in your uh, belly button area, you're spraying your decollete area, your pulse points, your hair, you're just overspraying, right? Overspraying because it's more than what your typical regular spray would be considered to be. That's really what overspraying is. Now, for us fragrance lovers, many of us love to overspray. I do not overspray all the time. I overspray in fragrances that I have tested, that I have evaluated, and that I know will not perform to my expectation. So I will overspray. And then there's also those times where I'm just being extra, I'm having an extra day, and I decide to overspray. But all in all, overspraying is not a practice that I really, you know, employ every day. I really don't because there is something to, to be said about when you spray your fragrance and then you can't smell it on yourself. If you overwhelm your nose, then your nose, of course, the, the human body is very smart. It will shut down. It will shut down your ability to sniff the fragrance. So because of that, I'm not really a proponent or much, you know, of a fan of spraying in this area, in the decollete area, because when you spray in this area, you're immediately going to get that scent, that very, very intense and strong. Once your skin starts to react to the fragrance, you're going to get it in your nose. And when I've done that with a couple of fragrances, it's just turned off my nose completely. And then I can't smell the fragrance for the entire day. And that's not what I want. I love to smell myself, but that's really totally up to you if you like to spray in that area. I just think that spraying behind your ears and in your neck area, and then if you are going on a date or you're going to be hugging someone and you want them to smell your sexy fragrance of the day, you can also spray behind your neck. And when they hug you, they will get a whiff of that fragrance. So basically you can spray wherever you want. What I've just given you are what's known to be like the best and most optimal places based on the fragrance industry by true experts, not me, by true experts as to where you should spray. And I've also told you why overspraying is not necessarily, in my opinion, a good idea every time you wear a fragrance. I am a true believer that, you know, you want to spray yourself. First of all, you need to understand your fragrance, right? Because there are fragrances that are rather weak and that really require you to overspray in order for them to last. And then you can bring a decant and continue to reapply the fragrance. But personally, I like uh, people to catch a whiff of my fragrance as I'm approaching not necessarily as soon as I enter the room. And I also want them to catch whiffs of the fragrance. I don't want it to be a such a strong scent bubble that if I'm standing next to them, they're choking and overwhelmed. I just don't think that that's very polite, but that's just my opinion. You do you and whatever works for you is what is best. Okay, so now let's talk about layering right? When it comes to layering your fragrances, it is very simple. Whatever fragrances you've decided that you want to layer for the day, you're going to start by applying the most intense or the strongest of the fragrances that you're going to use for layering. And you're going to continue with the next most intense until you reach the lightest of the fragrances. The lightest fragrance should be the one that you spray last, because if you spray the lightest first and the strongest towards the end, of course, the strongest fragrance will overpower all the other fragrances that you've layered. So you want to make sure that you start with the most intense fragrance and then go all the way up to your lightest. 
Another thing that I've heard a couple of fam members uh, discuss is do you have to wait for the fragrance to dry? You don't have to wait for the fragrance to dry when you're layering. Actually, it's not recommended that you wait for the fragrance to dry when you're layering. What you should do is spray and then spray the next one. And if there's a third fragrance that you're layering with, then just spray it. And then they will all dry together. And that makes for a seamless layering exercise and effect. So another thing that I wanted to share before we wrap up this video is you have to understand your fragrance, not just the part, the perfume concentration, as I shared at the beginning, but you also need to understand what kind of fragrance are you using? Are you using a Western niche fragrance? Are you using a Middle Eastern fragrance that is high end and will not require maceration? Or are you using a more inexpensive alternative Middle Eastern fragrance, which we all know do require time to sit and macerate? Not only do fragrances of that nature require time to macerate so that you can pick up on the true fragrance, so that you can get the full effect of all of the notes uh, that have been used to develop the fragrance. Maceration will allow you to not only really experience the fragrance as it was designed to smell, but it will also allow you to experience the true performance of the fragrance. Because if a fragrance has not had the chance to macerate or maturate, which we will be covering in another video, then that fragrance will most likely not perform to the extent that it was designed to do so. So you may very well have a fragrance that you just received a week ago. And not only does it smell a little bit interesting, but also it's not performing. Then here I come and I share in a video when I've had the fragrance for a couple of months and sometimes even just for a couple of weeks, but I allowed the fragrance to sit and I am telling you that it's giving me seven hours and you're telling me that it's not lasting not even an hour on your skin. I honestly in my humble opinion, would really encourage you to number one, make sure that you are taking the necessary steps to prepare your skin for the fragrance, then that you're spraying the fragrance in the correct way, and most importantly, that you've allowed that fragrance to, to sit or macerate. All right, so we've reached the end of today's video, and I just wanted to say, guys, that all in all, Fragrances are designed to be a pleasurable, a beautiful, and exciting experience where you create memories that you should be able to cherish for a lifetime. That's what a fragrance, in my opinion, is really about. If it becomes too complicated, then you're no longer enjoying. So you need to make decisions that align with what you are expecting for a fra from a fragrance and what you would like to experience when you wear the fragrance. Again, I am not an expert. I just shared with you today the different pieces and the different experiences and the different pieces of information that have actually made a difference in my fragrance journey. But that's not to say that you have a totally different journey, a totally different experience, and you are also correct because it's what's worked for you. As always, I hope that this was enjoyable and valuable. And thank you so much for hanging with me today. I will see you in the next video.